All of our productions at GCTV are sponsored in part by Bay State Health, providing the care you and your family need when you need it close to home. Visit them online at baystatehealth.org. Greenfield Savings Bank. Visit them at 400 Main Street in Greenfield. Call them at 774-3191 or go online to greenfieldsavings.com. Greenfield Community College, providing access and excellence in higher education in the Pioneer Valley. Visit them at gcc.mass.edu. The Hammond Family. The Hammond Family are longtime supporters of Greenfield Community Television. New Fortune Chinese Restaurant on the Mohawk Trail in Greenfield. Visit them online at newfortuneMA.com. Call them at 772-0838 and check them out on Facebook. Real Cleaning Services. Cleaning Hampshire and Franklin County since 1972. We don't cut corners, we clean them. Check them out online at realclean.com. Call them at 413-422-1143. People's United Bank, located at 45 Federal Street in Greenfield. You can call them at 774-3713 or visit them online at peoples.com. The Solar Store of Greenfield, replacing fossil fuels and nuclear power one home at a time. Visit them at 23 Fisk Ave. Call them at 413-772-3122 or visit them online at solarstoreofgreenfield.com. Thank you to our sponsors for supporting all of GCTV's productions. And welcome. This is a meeting of the Greenfield School Committee. Tonight is Wednesday, February 14th. It is 6.33 p.m. We are at the Greenfield High School at 21 Bar Avenue, and we have our meeting today for our regular meeting. It's the vision of the Greenfield Public Schools that every student has access to an academically rigorous, enriching, and well-rounded education that affords them opportunities to be well-connected scholars and contributing members of the broader society in which they live. We'll start our meeting with a roll call, please. Lady Member Karen. Lady Member Ekstrom. Here. Lady Member Holland. Lady Member Ward. Jackson. Mayor Martin. The show is absent. I have myself. Chairperson Minion. Here. And we have a quorum, so we will get started. Um, our first order of business is the approval of draft minutes. We do have three different sets of minutes here. The first one is from December 13th. It's a revised set of minutes. And to go along with that, there is an additional document that actually I think is a couple pages down in your packet. It looks like this. It's from Doug Selwyn. It doesn't have a title, but at the bottom, Doug's name is listed. Um, I reached out to Doug via email to ask for clarification related to an item um, in public comment in which he made on December 13th, and he responded with these notes and did approve to add this as to the record. Um, so this is essentially a supplement to the December 13th minutes. Uh, there isn't a need to vote on this. It's just getting added into the record here for today. Um, but is there a motion to approve December minutes from December 13th, 2017? Is there any conversation? All right, all those in favor? Fantastic, thank you. Um, Let's see, we also have minutes from January 10th. I believe that member Hollins has one uh, request to change the minutes from December 10th. Uh, we can, yeah, sure. Is there a motion to approve minutes from December, or just, pardon me, January 10th, 2018? So moved. Is there a second? Sure, thank you. Um, so, Member Hollins, did you want to go ahead and give us your input related to an amendment here? On page two of three, um, 
Item 6, New Business B, Policy KF, Community Use of School Facilities. SH question, change to Policy KF. I'd like it to read, because superintendent must be aware. Yes, superintendent. I believe there was discussion on this item and the feasibility of this was discussed. Sometimes it's the superintendent, sometimes it's the designee. Um, I would recommend that, I believe it's clear as written, I recommend no change. It, it doesn't represent what was said and that's why I wanted the minute changed. Um, I raised the question on this policy, it went back because there had been a change. I also went over this just before the meeting with the secretary who remembers the conversation. Um, the discussion was that the policy changed, said either or for notification. And the recommendation was it go back because the superintendent's office always had to be aware of when facilities are used, not either or because there are bills attached. So it has to go to the business office. But anyway, it wasn't just a recommendation. It, it was specific to why it could needed you, to come back. Could you read um, word for word what you would like the supporting sentences to letter B to how you would like them to read? SH question change to policy KF because superintendent's office must be aware of all building rentals. That was the discussion. It's going back, it was recommended to go back to committee, but that more fairly represents what I said. What you said. So, um, Superintendent's office is fine. I remember oh, saying the business manager always said to have it. Okay. okay, I'd like the record to um, reflect what was said. Um, I think what's missing here is that you stated or a quotation mark saying quotation because superintendent office. Would you? Yes, I didn't have time to go back and listen to the whole thing, but it wasn't, there was a reason given. Uh huh that the office had to always know. Um, are there any other comments on this? I just was thinking that, I think that what Susan's trying to say is she just wants it to be clear that the reason she said it was because this is what she thought should be true. It wasn't that she recommended the superintendent know something, um thank you member karen so i think the easiest solution here is potentially to add in some uh, quotation marks before because and after fees is that that sound okay i don't know what exactly i said but Okay, in order so to do you accept that as a solution, Member Holland? Um, is there any other deliberation on this with the amendment here to include quotation after, pardon, I'll read it back to you. SH question, change to policy KF semicolon, quotation mark, because superintendent office be aware of all building rentals for business office slash fees, period, end quotation. Let's be aware. Sure, okay. Adding in must be aware. 
Um, is there any... Yes. Superintendent, did you have a... I'd just like to express <clears throat> hesitation about rewording this particular item when it does appear to be clear in the policy itself. So um, I think there was a lot of exact quotations throughout the evening that may not have been reflected in this document. Um, but with some explanation that this was a one member's opinion about the recommendation rather than a directive to the superintendent, um, which may differ from the policy as it was voted. Okay, do we want to... I think your correction is fine. The, the minutes are saying that I made a comment. I'm just create, correcting my own comment, the way it's reflected. Okay, do we, I mean, my recommendation, I guess, at this point is to, you know, I think that we're all hearing this in the same way. Um, so I'd like us to resolve this now so that we don't table it and move it into the next meeting. Um, and so, Perhaps before the quotation mark, we can say, Member Holland said in quotation, is that then it's clear that it's stated that Member Holland's stated this. Is that. SH question changed to policy KF. That's true. And the reason I did is because, that's what I said, the superintendent's office must be aware of all building rentals. That's what I said at the meeting. Okay. I don't remember the exact words. But that's what I'm recommending. Thank you. Okay. Is there. Um, so, Susan Farber, can you read back what you have on that? I want to clarify that's one member's opinion and not exactly the policy as written. That's correct. Um, is there any other deliberation on approval minutes with the amendment? Okay. All those in favor of approving? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, minutes from January 10th are approved. Um, and then we also have some minutes from January 29th budget development workshop. Um, is there a motion to approve these minutes? All right. Thank you. Any deliberation? Okay. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Anyone opposed or abstain? Member Hollins? Did you vote? Oh, I. Thank you. Um, minutes from 129 are submitted into the record. Thank you. Um, now we will move on to public comment. Are there any members of the public here that would like to comment? All right. Um, if you could please state your name um, and residence for the record and then you have two minutes. Um, you have to actually press the button in the very front. Yep. Yeah, is the light illuminated? It is. Great, perfect. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. I'm Judy DeSauver, 43 Silvercrest Lane. Um, thank you for letting me speak to you. I serve on the planning board and the commission on disability 
access. Tonight, I came to ask your help in finding a few new members for the Disability Access Commission. The board's purpose is to shape the future of Greenfield by advocating to create respectful, accessible environments in coordination with the ADA. It's a seven member board and the appointments are made by the mayor. I feel confident that he would welcome any new volunteers. Currently we have three members, all are senior citizens, some with mobility issues. At the request of our chairwoman, Lynn Kelly, I volunteered to find some younger members. It was her vision that we would, we would be looking to the future by seeking out parents who would have an interest in this. I've struggled with how to present this in a politically correct manner. Our goal is to be forward thinking for people of all ages. Disability access, believe it or not, is my favorite committee that I've volunteered for. Part of the reason why public meetings are held at this high school now is because of us. It is accessible to all. When town council meetings were held on Main Street, someone in a wheelchair would have to wait outside the door for someone to open it. Once they get in, they would then hope that the 100 year old elevator would be working. Our commission was instrumental in moving these meetings here to this accessible location. Today we are continuing to, continuing to work with our local movie theater so that children and adults in motorized wheelchairs can get into that movie theater. This is an example of one ongoing issue of many years that we are fighting to remedy. Accessibility is not just about ramps, nor is it about following the letter of the law. It is about special needs of all kinds, from learning disabilities to low vision or hearing or mobility impairment. impairment. Parents are, you, are, are the ones uniquely qualified to identify what is needed. And with accessibility, the devil is in the details. We don't want to miss those details for our children. One thing I know for certain, a parent will do anything for their child. I understand privacy issues. Thus, I am here hoping you might be able to reach out to find those parents who might be interested. We have only nine meetings a year. They are on Tuesday afternoons, 1 to 3 p.m. Not in December, January, or February. Snow and wheelchairs don't mix. A parent who needed to leave at 2.30 for pickup is most welcome. We just received a $400,000 grant to look at all level two buildings in town, and we want to get it right. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Super. Could you be sure that Susan Ferber gets one? The woman with the computer over there. Thank you. I can share with John. Thanks a lot. I don't hear it. Oh, that's on. All right. Doug Selwyn, 38 Forest Avenue. I apologize to all of us for yet another <laughs> comment about testing. My least favorite topic in the entire universe, but it seems to eat up way too much time and etc. cetera. So um, I wanted to say a couple of things about testing since it's we're approximately entering testing season and the fact that the district I've been talking with teachers um, and some people who are on school councils and kind of universally, nobody thinks it's a good idea to be putting the energy and, and focus we are into testing and all are feeling bullied and sort of blackmailed into doing it because they all say we can't afford um, to lose the money from the state. But what we're doing then is doing things that harm the kids because of the threat of losing money. And that seems like a bad model. Um, part of how I'm seeing this is through the lens of one of the last elementary classes I taught where 21 of the 25 students spoke English or did not speak English at home. So they were taking tests in their second or third language. And um, the fact that they could speak multiple language actually rather than being a recognition of 
their uh, facility actually worked against them because they were again working in the second and third language. I'd score better on the test because I only speak one language. Um, and that's, again, if we add to it the kids who don't test well, who simply don't test well, or whose strengths are in their other areas, we know that there are students who are simply going to fail the test. It has nothing to do with the school, has nothing to do with the quality of the work in the classroom, has everything to do with the very narrow definition of intelligence that's being used, which comes out of the eugenics movement. That's a whole other conversation. Um, and the fact that there's only a very narrow way that people can express who they are and what they know. So, um, my question is, thinking from the medical model, but at least starting with do no harm, how can we act to do no or less harm to all of our students? We recognize some students will do very well, but we also know that some are not going to do so well. Kids with special needs, and second, third language learners, people who don't test well, people who are more comfortable taking machinery apart and putting it back together may not be skilled, et cetera, but with the narrow definition of intelligence, um, they're marked as failures. People who start at a first grade level, even though they're in fifth grade, get to third grade are still failures, rather than recognizing they've made tremendous gains. How can we act within the district? And I'm not saying we're not doing things to support those students, but how can we do more to support those students and how can the committee work with other districts um, to recognize common cause in recognizing that what we're doing is actually harming many of our children. How can we take Just steps? 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. I also promised teachers to ask, is there a curriculum coordinator coming? Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Okay, thank you. Are there any other members of the, oh, Member Hollins? Uh, before the speaker leaves, could we clarify his summary question because we got hung up on this in our minutes last time. I wrote down the summary question is how can we do more in the district to recognize student learning of all students? Was that the, uh, well, last time we held, held up our minutes trying to clarify what the, final message was. Well, we've just voted on the minutes. Um, we just voted and passed the minutes, and um, we've submitted Doug Selwyn's written memo related to that, um, the so that's there for the record. Okay. I just wanted to clarify what he's asking of us in some night. Yes. Yeah. This is... So right. with the public comment, it, it's right. if there's interest, I recommend that you reach out to Doug. Doug is um, very interested in the work that we're doing here, and I think that he can summarize everything for you that way, or perhaps send a follow-up email to the entire school committee um, if you'd like to find some clarification with the requests. Thank you. So we will move on now to reports. Uh, do we have a student representative? Yes, please. Yeah. No, no, yeah, there yeah. There we go. Well, that takes effort. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to continue to push it, though. Oh, there that, we go. that makes it a lot. <laughs> that makes it a lot easier. You're good. Yeah. Thought I was getting a workout in right now. <laughs> so we recently had our winter formal, which was dancing under the moonlight. 
And as someone who's been to every school dance since eighth grade year four years ago, this is one of the better ones we've had in the past couple of years, where we've had a lot more participation and just a lot more people show up. And it's bringing, because we've had just smaller grades in our school, so then we've had less people show up, which hasn't made the dances as enjoyable for the people that who do show up. But more and more are starting to show up, which is showing a, like, a change in our school climate just for the better. Uh, so a lot of us juniors have on the Snapchat group chats for all of our AP classes to remind each other of homework and just other sorts of projects. So we now also all have our superintendent's Twitter like notifications sent to our phone. So whenever there's a snow day, about like 30% of juniors know within three minutes that there's a snow day or a delay. And we appreciate the early, the early notice so we can like set our alarm plate and get more sleep, which just makes us happier. So you can study more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we can sleep more, which then in turn make us perform better in school because we're not so tired and overworked. So today was Valentine's Day, and student council sold carnations. So people get handed out today in period one. During period seven, French Club handed out candy grams, which are chocolate roses with little notes on them that, that were handed out. And Spectrum had a bake sale this week of chocolate goods and candy canes of just, and heart shapes. Uh, and also, no, it's not going around school today. There were a lot of stuffed animals and pheasants and toys, students giving to each other, which again just shows a really nice change in our school climate for the better as we've progressed with this year. Oh. The school play of The Tempest is the weekend after we come back from vacation. So that's Thursday, starting Thursday, March 1st, and then it's Saturday. March 3rd and Sunday, March 4th, which I just came from rehearsal from. And as someone in the play, I would really appreciate if any of you would show, show up to it, just like personally inviting you. It's gonna be great. I'm having a blast doing it. Like Drama Club hasn't been the biggest club we've had, but the kids in it, are, we bonded a lot this year and it's just really nice. So having, so just seeing any of you there would be nice. And just to see that We've had something that was a couple years ago non-existent, just work, now we can do Shakespeare, which is good. Um, Student Council had a Mesa Verde fundraiser where a nacho bar where they donated a whole bunch of food to us opened on a Sunday, which they are normally closed for. And it cost eight bucks to get in of that eight bucks. Whoever sold the ticket got all eight bucks from it, so I personally fundraised like $170 from there, which helped pay for a student council event that originally would have cost like $350, and I'm now down to $40 just from the fundraising we've done that I have to personally pay, which is nice. And tomorrow we have our Galileo trial, which is a school, well, the senior history, advanced history class for a month has been studying whether or not Galileo was blasphemous and that whole debate, our principal it will be the judge and they will take a court procedure in modern day, in a modern day setting on an old fashioned event. And it's a school wide event. We fill up the, um, caf not the cafeteria, the library. You feel, and people like will miss class, well classes will go together to go just sit and watch. It's so much effort and it's just nice to watch and support our peers. Um, band just elected our newest drum major today, which in all the elections and everyone said did great. Just a note that the ice cream that the honor roll gets is a nice treat after surviving midterms and quarter grades. It's just a nice <sighs> from it all. And as a fun side note, as an AP calculus student, I was overjoyed when on our midterm we get our grades correlated to what will be predicted to get on the AP exam, and the average is a four in that class this year, which will get you college credit in most classes. So that's really nice. Um, we had our Spread the Word to End the Word campaign a couple days ago, which is to promote awareness for people with mental disabilities, stopping the R word from being used. And we had a video with students speaking about why they don't use it. We had a assembly on it and we've had people sign a big banner on it 
And lastly, I promise last, Blueprint for Success started today, which is a college prep program for juniors who well, that meets every Wednesday for 90 minutes after school. So like another class period and where we work on college stuff, learning about the common app, scholarships, financial aid, and all of that. So next year we won't be as stressed as seniors. Oh, you do? Yeah. Uh, you, you. you said it was the last thing, but I have a few things. I was, I kind of, forgot about my responsibilities and but good news that I was watching the JV basketball game uh, we won so that's cool yeah uh, oops but um, we won so that's a good thing to a few other things are that the student stage crew is getting a, a little bit of traction in terms of new members are coming and being admitted and seeing what's up we don't we're still down to three <laughs> three student like stage crew actual members but there are a lot of people showing interest and a lot of people coming in to see what's up and all of that and checking it out so that's good we're getting the program rebooted a little bit um well there's something else there's something important i can't think of the other thing so no no it was oh wait no no i'm just gonna take a pass Thank you to both of you. And it's Dylan and Anthony, is that right? Awesome. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from school committee members, Member Hollins? I just want to say your, point, your reports are fabulous. Uh, I don't know the teacher of your AP calculus, but kudos to you for taking the course, Ms. Kinston. Oh. Fabulous math department in Greenfield, and it's great you're taking rigorous courses, and everyone's doing so well. I love hearing how happy everybody is and all the wonderful things in the high school. So thank you for your report coming here tonight. And I love just all the discussion. I could listen all night to what's going on. It's great. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Take care. Okay, moving on to chairperson report. Um, so I have a lot of things to kind of cover. I'll try to speak quickly. Um, there are a handful of things in your packet today that I basically just wanted the committee to have. Um, so the first one that will show up is the revolving funds policy DBE. Um, this is a policy that was voted on by the school committee I think about three or four months ago. Let's see, the date should be on here. Um, and it was requested that this be provided to the committee. So that is here. Um, in addition, this, just to go back, the revolving funds policy is helpful in understanding some of our revolving accounts and what's recommended um, as best practice in terms of carryover balances for those accounts. So when we're looking at the budget, this will help to inform some of the numbers that you're seeing there. Um, the next thing that's in your packet is this school committee monthly meeting calendar. Um, I thought it would be helpful for everyone to have the dates consolidated onto one sheet to see what we have agreed to and what's coming up. If you see an error here, please say so now. Um, yes. Um, I just want to note that the budget and finance subcommittee is not on here and that's because they were meeting so frequently that there is not yet a set time for that committee, um, but we have spent a lot of quality time together. That's right. Thank you, Superintendent. We sure have. I'm not even on the committee, but I've been there. Um, so for the public, the Health and Safety Committee is planning to meet at 1 p.m. on the first Tuesday of every other month. That's, I believe, dependent on what may be necessary to deliberate on. So there is an opportunity there to meet more than once every other month if necessary. Um, of course, our regular school committee meetings are the second Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Personnel and collective bargaining, uh, which includes the superintendent evaluation, is 10 a.m. the third Tuesday of every month. And policy and program is planning to meet at 1 p.m. the fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, and much as I mentioned, similar to what I mentioned for the Health and Safety Committee, 
there may be times that our committees will want to meet because there's business to attend to. Uh, that will happen, but this is our regularly scheduled meeting time. Um, and then we do have two special meetings coming up. On Wednesday the 28th at 6.30 p.m. right here, uh, we have scheduled a public hearing for our budget as well as a budget presentation and is some additional items. So it's essentially uh, similar to our regular school committee meeting format. And then our, we have scheduled March 7th at 6.30 p.m. as a special meeting for the school committee to place our final vote on the FY19 budget. So please be aware of those dates that are coming up. Um, are there any questions or comments about that before I move on? Okay. Um, and then there was this also revolving funds for school department programs. This was a supplement to the policy that we just went over. I've also included a copy of our voted school committee governance goals. Um, these are goals that we've committed to I believe it are December and December 13th, we voted to approve these goals. These goals were formed from a subcommittee that put forward uh, these as a draft and adopted by the full committee. And this is something that I use regularly to help to guide the work that I'm doing and chairing the committee and helping to keep us focused. Um, and I just wanted everyone to be sure to have a copy of this in their hands. Pardon? Yes, member extra. Sorry. Um, this first, the form advisory subcommittee meet in January and February to inform and advise the superintendent on district strategic planning and district goals. Uh, Chairwoman and I spoke. Oh, I'm sorry. The chairwoman and I spoke about that previously, and we had decided that we would postpone those meetings to a later date because of all the budget issues that were going on. So while they haven't happened, they will most likely in March will start. Thank you. Just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, I think that's important to tell everyone, to make sure everyone uh, understands that. Are there any other comments or questions about the governance goals? Uh, Member, Ekstrom, Member Ekstrom was appointed to be the chairperson of that committee. The committee is, um, it's, a, it's an advisory committee put together by the school committee to inform uh, ongoing conversation related to district strategic planning and district goals. And it's reflected in the first uh, operation goal. Thank you. Um, the next item is a copy of a recorder article it's entitled State School Board Leader Encourages Lobbying for More Aid. Um, this was brought to my attention by one of our members and I wanted to ensure that everyone here uh, saw this article. So that's why it's in your packet. As well, I've included um, a little bit of information related to collective bargaining. It came up as a request from a couple of members to have a little bit of foundational information related to collective bargaining. This is really just, um, this is provided by the MASC and it, and it outlines some basics. So this is certainly not the be all end all of collective bargaining. However, it's a good place for us to start. Um, and I wanted the committee to have a copy of this. Um, as well in your packet, there are some MASC uh, professional development courses that are available. And I just had printed out the schedule for charting the course. All of our members are required to attend or complete the charting the course. Um, I believe that most of us have. Uh, there, these are some options for where it will be held in the next several months. As well at the very top, um, there is the annual legislative breakfast that we just passed actually, pardon me. Um, the MASC Summit on Poverty is coming up next month. Both member Hollins and I attended that last year. I felt that it was quite valuable and fairly inexpensive um, and easy to attend. So I recommend if folks are interested in just getting some more knowledge about um, how, you know, our role as a school committee member, but also about larger topics that are happening um, and how it relates to public schools, this is a great event to attend. And of course, the day on the Hill is after that, it's April 25th. Um, and that is a large um, group field trip, essentially, to the Hill to advocate for the needs of our district. Are there any questions or comments about the MASC events that are available? Okay, 
thank you. Um, so I do have a couple other things. There was an interest among some, uh, some committee members to have some s school visits, and I did talk with the superintendent about that. And we will be putting together some potential dates for school visits. So look out for an email with um, some possible dates for school visits. That'll be coming up probably in like the next month or so. Um, and then also, let's see. I just wanna say that at our March meeting, we have a couple of topics coming up. Um, we, we will be discussing our professional development ideas for the school committee. Um, thus far, I've heard interest in an MASC-led school finance workshop um, focusing on Chapter 70 funding. I've also heard interest in having a workshop on superintendent goals, um, Google Apps, minutes, um, legal review, charting the course held here, and also um, collective bargaining. These are all really great topics. Um, we, as a committee, did, through our governance goals, I believe commit to at least one professional development workshop to generally occur in the summertime. Um, so I just want to let you all know that this opportunity for this discussion will be coming up at the next meeting so that we can prepare for that. Um, as well, I think that that's just, oh, actually I did want to quickly respond to some of uh, what Mr. Selwyn was asking about. Um, I generally don't do this with the public uh, questions. There was one meeting that I did say that I would try to come back with some more information. So I am trying to hold myself to that word in this moment. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a robust amount of information to respond to Mr. Selwyn. Um, however, I do have some opportunities to reach out to some of our other legislators. I know that um, there are a lot of folks in our community who are interested in hearing about opportunities and how they can contribute to um, amplify our voice here, especially here in Western Massachusetts. And I just want folks to know that um, Senator Chong Diaz is the chairperson of the Joint Committee on Education. Um, and I believe that Senator Jalen is the vice chairperson of the Joint Committee. Um, a couple months ago, I know that uh, Senator Jalen was specifically looking for input related to school ranking and how we can potentially modify our school ranking system. So I just want to put that out there and encourage folks to get in touch with them and be sure to let your voice be heard. I also wanted to remind the committee and the public that related to um, standardized testing, back in 2015, our school committee did actually vote on a moratorium for um, on, on high stakes testing. Um, and I just want to bring that to people's awareness so it's not forgotten because that still stands. We, we voted on that. It was voted um, five members in favor um, and one member abstaining and zero no votes on that. Um, and with that, I will Go ahead and move on to subcommittee reports. Um, Member Karen, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so we met uh, on the 30th, and uh, we spoke a little bit about what had been talked about, the FRTA busing situation. I was sort of brought up to speed that we decided to table that until more information was available. Um, and then we actually had some really interesting conversations with principals from two of the schools who came in and spoke to us, um, both Principal of Newton, Melanie Goodwin, and the Principal of Four Corners, Jake Toomey, about their issues with pickup drop-off. Um, and I think as a subcommittee, we learned a lot, and we learned that we have some work to do there and how we can support the schools, but also how can we get um, help supporting the schools because it's not just our school's job to maintain those roadways. Um, so I'm hoping to, for our, before our next committee meeting, to reach out to different people and get some information on how our policies need to change or be affected and who can help us 
get what we need to help keep kids safe and parents safe and those roadways passable. Are there any questions for Member Karen related to the Health, Safety, and Facilities Report? Okay. Seeing none, thank you, Member Karen. Um, we will move on to um, Secretary Alexander, Chair of the Personnel and Negotiation Subcommittee. Thank you. Uh, personnel and Negotiations Subcommittee, we met on the 5th of February and we also met on the 25th of January since the last full school committee meeting and topics that we uh, discussed in public session was basically we spoke on the superintendent's goals and which hopefully later on this uh, meeting we will be talking a little more in depth on that. We've also included the Human Resources MOU which has been one of the issues we've been trying to tackle, and this is basically to uh, inform that the discussions are continuing. So that's pretty much it for that. Can we report out the policy? Sure, sure, thank you. Okay, segueing into the policy subcommittee. Unfortunately, with the bad weather and with the operational tempo of the school committee right now with budget and other things going on, uh, the policy committee has not had an opportunity to sit down and meet. Right now I am looking at convening our first meeting the fourth Tuesday of the month, which would be the 27th of February. My focus for this committee is to begin, is to finish up working on the policies that are in first reading and waiting to be finished. But also I want to put a high priority on the focus for this committee to be working on policy requests from our fellow subcommittees, because my opinion it would be is, is if a subcommittee needs a policy looked at, then we need to make that a, a very high priority to do what they need to, so they continue their work. So that is policy. Thank you. Are there any questions first on um, personnel and negotiation subcommittee? Okay. Oh, Member Ekstrom? I, maybe I, <coughs> excuse me, maybe I didn't, I just misheard. We have two um, draft minutes from personnel and negotiations, one's from the 5th and one's from January 25th. Did you go over both of those when you were speaking? I'm did sorry? you Did you review the minutes from both of those? Yes. Okay, sorry. I'm, the hearing's not so great right now. <laughs> um, and are there any questions or comments related to the policy subcommittee report? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, so our next subcommittee is the Budget and Finance Subcommittee. Um, member Ward is not here this evening. So I'll just make a brief introduction to this and then um, if Member Hollins, who's also, who is a member of the subcommittee, if she wants to add anything in, of course she can. Um, the third member of that subcommittee is Mayor Martin, who is also not here today. So there are two, well, actually, three sets of, pardon me, four sets of minutes. Um, three of them are stapled all together, and then one is in a separate document. So the budget subcommittee has met several times as reflected here um, to predominantly review and deliberate on the FY19 budget development. Um, and we have been watching the process as um, we kind of started back in January with a bit of a rough outline of where we were headed um, and we ended uh, just last week with a more robust proposed superintendent's budget for FY19. Um, and throughout this time there were several <coughs> questions uh, related to uh, what was included, what was not included. I think that the minutes from 212 show a pretty extensive list of um, what was some of what was included in the conversation. Um, at this time, the subcommittee has not come to any consensus recommendation on a budget. There is a meeting scheduled for, I believe, March. There is 
the subcommittee meeting that's scheduled, um, I'll check the date. There's a subcommittee meeting scheduled prior to the March 7th date in order to um, hopefully come to consensus recommendation to bring to the full committee related to our final vote with the budget. Um, so that is that is up on that's uh, coming around the corner. Are there any specifics, Member Hollins, that you'd like to add in? No, no specifics. I'd just like to say that just as one member, my opinion is it's a really important um, activity for an elected school committee to know the budget. And I'm mindful. I try to buy papers, not, not just read the recorder, but buy papers from surrounding districts. And it's easy to see some significant difficulties of districts. And almost always, it, it, you can wonder if some of the problems are not really detailed oversight, you know, very big over expenditures. Or, and we've had some of those problems years ago in Greenfield. So I think it's really important, particularly um, my understanding with any school budget, 75 to 80 percent of the budget is personnel to know how many people are in the budget and where they are. So I just think it's important for people to get involved and um, take an interest in the district budget. Thanks, Member Hollins. Um, I'll just add in quickly and then take any comments or questions from members. Um, that the February 28th meeting um, is scheduled to be the public hearing as well as a full-on presentation of the budget from the superintendent. At that time, we will have um, space to deliberate here as a full committee on the budget. We are on schedule with um, budget development and um, a notice of our public hearing was posted in the paper today, um, keeping us in compliance with the city charter um, and I am looking forward to further deliberation on the budget. Um, Superintendent, do you have any comments related to the FY19 bubble budget development? I'd like to thank members of the Budget and Finance Subcommittee that have contributed to a very uh, accelerated budget development schedule. We've done a lot of work that typically takes place over the process of many months um, in a very compressed way. And I'd like to thank the principals, the department heads, uh, the teachers, the folks at the schools that are um, bringing forward ideas um, and that were part of this budget process. I think what stands out is that in Greenfield, the budget development process is about kids. It's about the values of the organization and it's about bringing forward uh, a way to advocate for what matters most to us and that's the quality of the education and the students here in Greenfield. Um, the budget notice that went into the paper today, if I could just read this, um, starts by saying, and this is a, a note from our, your school committee chairperson, the school committee is bringing forward a request for funding to restore the 1% cut to the FY18 mayor's budget. If restored, the FY19 budget proposal represents only a 3.67 increase over the current year's budget, and the comparison is below. So I'm very pleased that despite nearly a million dollars increase in fixed costs that we are having to absorb in this year's budget, that the proposal um, manages those costs and retains the quality of services for our students, keeps our teachers, keeps class sizes, keeps our arts, keeps our programs here in our schools that families choice into Greenfield for without passing on exorbitant increases to the taxpayers. I think this is a really good um, right in the middle of preserving the quality of education without um, putting forward a budget that's unreasonable. And I'd really like to thank the committee for your support and I would like to ask the committee to continue to advocate on behalf of our students um, because this is where it becomes important that they hear your voice. Thank you. Any questions or comments? related to budget subcommittee okay all right seeing none um, we will move on to the school committee representatives um, member Hollins 
Did your committee meet? I sit, I go to planning and construction. It didn't, it did not meet last month um, because, and I wanted to bring this up as in response to your report about setting up a tour for school committee members. Planning and construction was scheduled to have a tour of all the school buildings and it was canceled. I believe the uh, school coordinator, some, something happened and couldn't attend. And it was that that tour was not able to be scheduled for the meeting that's coming up the third Tuesday. But if you're setting one up for school committee and if planning and construction also wants a tour of the buildings, I don't know if you'd want to combine that so it's one tour. Just want to mention that um, they're trying to set that up again. And, you know, the, the last meeting before the canceled tour was really talking about the solar energy and solar panels going on the roofs of some schools and doing a profile of every public building in the town, including school buildings, so you know when it was built, etc. So we're meeting third Tuesday. Thank you. Any questions for Member Hollins? Okay, thank you very much. And um, Member Ekstrom, as the collaborative representative, I think that possibly... Um, the meeting, I was, uh, so there was an initial meeting that unfortunately I wasn't able to attend for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't realize until the night before that it was happening or maybe even been that same day. And I was also basically on my deathbed with a cold, so I did not attend. I have since reached out and said I'm still interested in coming, and I'm actually going to go to um, an individual meeting with a representative so they can review all the materials with me. That's great. That's great. We'll look forward to an update from you after that meeting and the rest Thank of the you. meetings. Um, and did you find the schedule on the website? I did. Okay. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any questions from Ember Ekstrom or the input there okay thank you um i believe that's all of our school committee representatives um so we'll move on to our first business item this is the fy19 school calendar so i will actually just hand this off immediately to the superintendent to walk us through what is here before us in our packet and some changes that she is recommending So in your packet, you received the draft Greenfield Public Schools 2018-2019 calendar. This calendar by contract with our Unit A teachers members is sent out to the Greenfield Education Association and we request feedback on that uh, proposed calendar before it comes to the school committee. We did receive significant, significant feedback on the calendar. Um, and I would like to share with you some proposed revisions based on that feedback. Um, and I will walk you through um, what's, what's here on the calendar. I have heard from many parents that they really rely on this calendar about this time of year to set next year's vacations. So um, for folks listening at home, it has been important to us to get this calendar out so that um, you can begin your planning. So this calendar begins with teacher in-service days at the end of August and with a first day of school on, I'm looking at 2017-18, that will not help us, and a first day of school on August 29th, which is a Wednesday for grades 1 through 12. Would you like to hear the proposal as written and the changes after? So you just see what's here on the, on the document and then I'll go back to changes. Great. Um, I'll fast forward to some of the key features. There's a December vacation scheduled from the, with a half day on December 21st, which is a Friday, and the vacation goes through January 1st. We return to school on January 2nd, 2019. New in this proposed calendar are half days for Greenfield High School, grades eight through 12, and these would be early release days on the 22nd through 24th of January for midterms. 
the rationale behind this is that most of the area districts do allow some time for this. And uh, primarily the purpose is that if a student is absent or um, not able to participate in one of their exams, they need time for makeup. And in order to do a makeup exam, the teacher has to be available. <clears throat> in order for the teacher to be available to hold themselves for exam for an additional 90 minutes, we have to allow some time for that to happen. In addition, there's grading and so forth. So we're recommending that there be half days uh, consistent with other surrounding districts, January 22nd, 23rd, and 24th for Greenfield High School only. The April vacation, sorry, February vacation uh, or winter break as it's called would take place the week of February 18th through 22nd. The April vacation would take place the week of April 15th through 19th with a kindergarten screening day of preceding Friday, Friday, April 12th, which would be no school for kindergarten only on that date. And then school would end on June 19th, which would include five snow days. And again, at the end of the year, we would have those half days for Greenfield High School only, grades eight through 12 early release on June 10th and 11th for final exams and an early release for everyone on the last day of school whenever it falls. <clears throat> so that's the calendar as it's presented in your packet. For folks listening at home, thank you for bearing with us. These are also on our website. Um, and as soon as it's approved, the, the new one will be posted. There are two uh, proposed changes to the calendar as written. One is that the meet and greet nights, uh, they're currently scheduled staggered so that parents can attend at different schools if they have children, different schools and so forth. There's a recommendation instead of having August 27th and 28th to have them all on the first day, August 27th. And the reason behind this is that teachers really need to then focus their efforts on getting ready for school. And it's hard to have a meet and greet night followed by the first day of school. And for some of our younger students, we've observed that some of our younger students are out late and then they're going to their first day of school the next day. So we'd like to address this by having meet and greet on August 27th, with followed by a teacher in service day on the 28th and then the first day of school on the 29th. And the proposed times for those would be staggered so that families can still attend at multiple schools, elementary five to six, middle school six to 7 p.m. and the high school seven to 8 p.m. So again, all meet and greet on August 27th. And the next change is in October. <clears throat> Instead of having an early October open house, um, because we've just recently had those meet and greet nights and we've encouraged families to come in, we're recommending that those open house nights be pushed until later in the month and that all the schools together on uh, October 25th have an open house night on October 25th. Again, elementary and middle school earlier would be from 5 to 6.30 and then the high school with an open house from 6 to 7.30. And everything else on this calendar as it's written, I'm recommending keeping as written. There are uh, representatives from the Greenfield Education Association if you had further questions from, for them about their feedback, um, but I, I believe that is a pretty fair representation of some of the changes that were brought forward. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. And I also just realized that I just skipped right over the Superintendent report, and I'm so sorry. I'm, my apologies. Just rolling with I it. I was just going for it. Um, so we will go back to that after we talk about the calendar here. Uh, I think there are a couple options here for us. We can vote on this tonight if everyone feels like they have fully understood and digested the proposed changes. Um, or if you prefer, we can table until the 28th and come back with a revised document so we have it all printed up neatly for everyone. Um, all it takes is a motion and a second to send us in that either direction. Yes, Member Hollins. I'd like there's a question about the calendar before we vote what to do with it. And sure. My question is, um, does the state still have an hour requirement for instruction, which I vaguely remember is 900 hours at elementary school and 990 hours at high school, but I don't really remember. Is that still in place? Yes. And, and my follow-up question is, were you able, with the additional half days at the high school, to still meet the required instructional minutes? 
that's been looked at and evaluated and the answer I haven't done the calculation myself but my understanding is that yes so there's a number of days requirements and then an hour's time on learning requirement and they're both met it's my understanding by this we can double check it if you'd like but it's been looked at that would be great if we send it back to just be sure we have the required number of minutes of instructional time but the reason I'm asking is because there are new, new half days added something else if it goes if it's coming back to us I, I will say we're well above our instructional requirement right now Great. So I, I'm confident this still meets that I do have a question um, yes you I just want to be clear the 25th you were suggesting to have the open houses for the elementary schools and the middle school both from 5 to 6 30 I just wanted to understand that correctly. That, that's my proposal. Um, middle school, because it starts at fifth grade, seemed too young to put it with the upper grades. Um, we recognize that some families have, of course, elementary and middle schools, but it's an hour and a half. So our sense is that within that time period, you'd get to spend at least some in both. Um, the, it's not, not perfect. Uh, uh, the only thing that I remember is that last year at the middle school, they actually ran their open house at specific times, which made that nearly impossible for parents at both buildings um so perhaps if we're going to go with this plan they they didn't even tell the parents that that was the plan so we showed up and we didn't know they were running it like you go to this classroom at this time and we didn't know that so if we're going to do this let's just make sure the parents have more notice thank That's you all. thank you thank you um <coughs> so really we should entertain a motion of some kind um would we like to vote on this this evening or would we like to table until the 28th? Oops, I'll motion to table this until the 28th so we can have a corrective calendar to vote and to clarify any questions from tonight. Okay, so um, a motion to table is not debatable, so we'll um, go ahead and vote on that. <laughs> yeah, that's correct, right? Okay. Um, so Pardon? Um, yes. I can change the motion to just not vote on it tonight. So a, a second is needed. So is there a second? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I appreciate everyone bearing with me. Um, so all those in favor of tabling the vote on the Greenfield Public Schools 2018-19 calendar until February 28th. Yes, Superintendent. I just want to make a clarifying comment for families. It's my understanding that there will not be any change to the vacation dates as described tonight. So for, for folks listening, the December, April, February vacations, um, there's no discussion about those except possibly extending the school year if necessary but I, I i don't anticipate that'll be necessary so we'll post this revised version on the website as well so that families can see that uh, as soon as possible after this even before the vote thank you okay um so there's a motion on the table um all those in favor of tabling hi um anyone against okay and no abstention. So the motion passes to table until February 28th. Yes, Member Hollins. If it's convenient and not an effort, I hear a lot of chatter about districts that instead of adding days to the calendar, doing something else like snowbag days or something, and just maybe when the calendar comes back, it'd be interesting to hear if you've thought about that. If we have. Um, that's an interesting sort of uh, transition into our next agenda item, but I do wanna pause this conversation and step back to the superintendent's report. Again, I'm sorry about that. In the interest of time, and since we've sort of moved on to business, I'll just mention a few quick items. The first is that in an effort to improve uh, family and community engagement, and also with uh, great thanks to folks who have been to our website, and are really interested in school events and have provided us some feedback. 
We have launched a new feature on the website which is designed to make your life easier. So if you follow school committee meetings, uh, perhaps many people do, or are interested in school events, you can now just click a little box and you get an alert every time there's a calendar change. So if you're interested in only events at Federal Street School or events at only the um, Academy of Early Learning or all events or only calendar changes or only alerts, you can make those selections however you like. It's right on our website, gpsk12.org. We just launched this week and we already have um, a pretty terrific response to it and a number of other districts across the state sort of reaching out and exploring um, because this is <clears throat> really designed as a uh, communication and outreach tool for families to make it a little easier. So if you are a subcommittee chair, I recommend you try it by um, signing yourself up for the alerts on some of our school committee events and see if you find it useful. We did just celebrate the 100th day of school and you received today a couple of photographs from what our elementary school students did as they counted, talked about uh, what does 100 look like um, throughout the district. This is a great day. It's a lot of fun, but there's a lot of learning built in as every day our students talk about um, what does it mean to come to school and be a learner and what does it take to get to 100? So it was a great uh, celebration that was marked this week. It is Black History Month. Our schools do various activities to celebrate and acknowledge the culture that accompanies this. Uh, one of the many events was at Greenfield Middle School, I believe this past Friday, and Newton School students and Greenfield Middle School students participated in a drumming celebration and dancing, I'm getting heckling. Federal Street was there too, there, I'm being heckled. <laughs> I was busy dancing, so I apologize. I wasn't taking it all in. I was part of the uh, dancing. I left a budget meeting and got to go to a uh, dancing and drumming event. So it was one of, one of the highlights for many people that went. We do have kindergarten registration coming up. Uh, this will be every Friday, uh, sorry, excuse me, every Thursday night in March at Central Office. We're registering our kindergartners for next year. And March 9th is our kindergarten screening day. And March 1st is the uh, kindergarten registration night at the school. So we encourage families to register at your neighborhood school, find out what your neighborhood school has to offer. And it's not too early to be thinking about September. It's coming right up. We are headed into winter break next week, February 19th to 23rd. Um, so that will be a great time for everyone to be diving into their reading at home, I think. And I do want to take a moment to acknowledge and celebrate one of our middle school students who this week was recognized not only in the Greenfield Public Schools, but at Greenfield Community College. Middle school student named Marina was recognized with the Bright Light Award at Greenfield Community College. Um, this was such a terrific acknowledgement of her work. Um, if you are or are not familiar with Marina, she's an intelligent and outspoken student who has taken on several causes. And you may have seen or worn the buttons that say gay does not mean stupid and has really um, done a great job of advocating for herself, her peers, her family um, with a lot of poise, a lot of courage, and a lot of kindness. And I'm really excited that Marina received this recognition and that um, Greenfield Public Schools students have opportunity for their voice to be heard. In your packet, you also have a um, FY18 budget report and <clears throat> the business office is not here tonight, but I'm happy to address any questions if you have any. Um, we are trying to use current year funds to make prepayment of tuition if possible. So we're looking closely at available balances so that we can begin to identify any savings to put towards next year's budget. Thank you. Are there any questions for the superintendent? I don't have a okay. question, but I don't know if you've seen Marina's newest button, sushi rolls, not gender rolls. <laughs> She's got another one out there. So. Thanks, Check Member Karen. <laughs> any other questions or comments for the superintendent? Member Hollins. Can we comment on the budget report? Sure. Um, are you looking at the Excel spreadsheet? 
Yes, I'm looking at this. And in, in each school, you can see the first school is North Parish, second school is Federal Street. This is a summary sheet. The next. And then third line up, second or third line from the bottom of each of these is the school supplies, instructional supplies. And if you look at the first column, what was expended in the year before, you can see that it's a, it's a lower amount than perhaps what the budget was. Um, you know, Federal Street. It's, and I, I just want to say um, one of my, my opinion that if we're looking to hold off expenditures, I, I really hope we let schools spend the money that we budget for supplies for the students and we not hold off that because we don't budget very much to begin with. And when I look at the budget reports, it looks like that they aren't ex expense, they aren't spent. And I just hope, my own opinion, we don't freeze those particular funds. Thank you, Member Hollins. You don't have to respond. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, we will jump back into our, <laughs> into our business items. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, so our next order of business is the notification of snow day usage. Um, I requested the superintendent include this here because I believe that we've used all of our five snow days. Um, so I'll hand it over to her to comment on this. Luckily, I don't have to count to 100 for this. We're, we're only at five. There have been five snow days. Right now, our last day of school, I know everyone at home is thinking about June, is Wednesday, June 20th. So we, we sort of build five days into the calendar, anticipating that, folks, we live in New England. And uh, in fact, this year was a New England kind of a year. So our end of the year right now is on Wednesday, June 20th. and. Uh, it looks like it's going to be mild for a little while, but if we were to have one or two more snow days, we could easily add those on to the 21st or 22nd. Um, we're not obviously going into July at this point. We're still third week in June. Um, and hopefully with any luck, Mother Nature will cooperate and we won't uh, be adding much beyond that. Are there any questions related to this item? Any comments? Okay. Um, Seeing none, we will move on to business item C, legislative representative. Um, that is a school committee policy is that we have the school committee legislative program. Um, it's item BJ. Um, again, this is another item that I had talked about at our last meeting. And so therefore I'm bringing it forward to hold myself to my word. Um, you'll see in number three that the committee will annually designate a person who may or may not be a member of the committee to serve as its legislative representative. This person will be authorized to speak on the committee's behalf with respect to legislation being considered by the Massachusetts legislature or the United States Congress or their respective committees. In all dealings with individual elected representatives, the legislature or Congress, the committee's representative will be bound by the official positions taken by the school committee. So um, in, my, in my years on the school committee, we have not designated this person. Um, and this is, a, this is not a chairperson assignment. This is a school committee designation. I just want to make that clear. Um, and that's all the comment I have at this time, unless there's a motion on the table to open up any discussion. Yes, Secretary Alexander. Chairperson, I would like to present a motion to postpone indefinitely uh, for a reason of we've already got way, we've got a lot of stuff on our agenda and workflow that we have, we have to complete now in the next couple of months. And uh, that, and, but I do believe that this is a very important topic that we should be looking towards this with the things that are going on around the state and <clears throat> locally. But again, I would like to just postpone this indefinitely, but be, leave it open to where we can pick this up later this spring, possibly. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Member Alexander, do you want to speak any further to your motion? Okay, I'm getting the uh, talk louder from, <laughs> from, from our crew here. Anyway, uh, we really should be uh, committed to having a legislative uh, representative representing the needs and communicate our needs and thoughts to our representatives at the state level as well as to associations around the area. Um, right now we do have a budget cycle which is taking up a lot of times. So we do have a lot of activity going on within the personnel subcommittee and at this time it would be really hard for us to to vote the focused effort that we do need to place on this at this time. Um, I would like to make sure that we do bring this back onto an agenda later on this spring when things tend to slow down a little bit. I have been reading through the policy and having the idea of that we can appoint someone that is not on school committee. I think that is a thought that's uh, worth a lot of deliberation. If we do find the right voice with the right skills, I think we could make a good impact on the future of Greenfield schools. Thank you, Member Alexander. Um, Member Hollins. I'd like to disagree with Member Alexander. Um, this policy talks about the committee keeping itself informed of pending legislation and to actively communicate if it has a position. It doesn't say it has to take positions on anything. But personally, we have a new commissioner. Um, our mayor has just been selected as the head of the Mayor's Association around the state. Um, I think it's an important time to make sure we have a voice where we have a mayor that's going to have a prestigious role with other mayors and a new uh, commissioner of education. So I don't see where this is daunting for the school committee. It merely asks that someone uh, try to stay abreast of what's happening with legislation and the chairperson can decide if they ever want to put anything on the agenda. The person can't represent the committee without the committee deciding it wants to be represented. But I think it's important to know what legislation is coming around that could affect uh, the school district even if it's on testing. So I think we should have someone either from the school committee or whoever is appointed to make sure we're abreast of pending legislation. Is there any other input um, on the motion to postpone indefinitely? Yes, Superintendent. Okay. Yes, Secretary Alexander. Is it okay at this point, I can add other comment to this? Re yes. Respond to committee member Hollins. Uh, first off, I'm not saying that we should ignore the legislative issues that are coming down. It is an inherent responsibility of each member of this committee to be reading the legislative uh, information that's coming down for us to be informed of what's going on. The only reason, the only thing I am asking for us to take more time to think on is actually having someone represent us to actually go to Beacon Hill and sit down and take meetings and join in on different legislative sessions. And But to remain informed, that is a key responsibility of our job here as school committee members. So I'm just saying hold off on assigning a name to a, that position. That is it. Okay, any uh, further comments on the motion? Um, I just have a couple of quick comments from myself as an individual member. I was very excited about this particular policy. I am still very excited about this policy. I think it can be really, really powerful. Um, after having, what, six weeks um, on the job as the chairperson, I am feeling a little bit uh, unsure about how to move forward with it, uh, mainly because it's a new thing. It's not a new policy. It's just a new thing for us to actually designate someone into this position. Um, and I do appreciate the opportunity for anyone who's interested to be able to um, voice their interest. Um, just amongst the school committee members that I've had contact with, there have been multiple members that have not only informed me of legislation that's going on, but also informed me of interest in this kind of level of advocacy. 
So one of the questions that I have is how do we select this person? Um, and, and part of why I would support potentially tabling this is to work out those details first um, and then come back with a process um, so that we have a little bit more of an outline of how we're selecting um, our members. I'm just, pardon me, our uh, designee. Um, any, yes, Member Helen. Why would this be different than any other person we select where the chairperson appoints the one? Well, my I mean, understanding. Why, why is this taking months where you, where the chairperson can say, would you like to represent us on the collaborative? Would you, I don't see why this is different. My understanding of my reading of the policy is that the committee will designate a person and I'm not seeing anything outlining specifically that the chairperson would do so. Um, but if that is the interpretation of the committee, then you know that's one way of handling it. Again, it's just upon my closer inspection of this that I felt like, okay, you know, as a chairperson, I don't want to overstep. And then also, you know, how will, how do we plan to move forward with it? These questions kind of are unanswered. Um, is there any further deliberation on the motion that's on the table? The motion on the table now is to postpone um, the vote on, postpone designating someone um, indefinitely. Did you have a comment or are you? I have a comment. Sure. Um, I just want to be clear that I'm reading. So the person does not need to be a member of the school committee. So if someone of the public was interested in this role, would they come to us at public comment and say, I am interested in the role as a legislative representative? Or are we supposed to seek them out? I'm unsure of what that means. So I feel I just I would like more information about how we select someone like this. So yes. I support tabling it for another Thank you, Member Karen. Um, any other questions or comments? Yes, Member Ekstrom. So I'm looking at the bottom of this. This says draft 4405. Are we really saying this draft is from 2005? And is, if that's the case, should we be trying to find out if there's a new version? <laughs> well, the whole policy manual needs to be updated and Thank you, Member Ekstrom. Okay. There are several policies that are dated back. Um, this is, and yes, a, a possible solution for this would be to send this to the policy subcommittee um, and to review uh, and look into also some of these other questions that we have about process. That is an option. Um, right now, the motion on the table is to postpone um, the designation of a school committee legislative representative Um, if are there any other comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor of postponing, say aye. Okay, and all those against, one, seeing four to one, and no abstentions. Um, acting on, unless there's any objection, I think that moving the school committee legislative program to the policy subcommittee um, is a great way to move this keep this uh, alive, but also answer some questions that we have. Okay, um, so the next item, I actually don't have any, ex with the exception of the, the governance goals that I mentioned in the chairperson report, um, what we voted on through our governance goals was to have our district our committee draft an annual letter to stakeholders. Um, and the idea behind this would be to put this out in uh, February or March. And I'm just gonna find my governance goals real quick. Um, and if I recall correctly, and uh, Member Alexander, when he returns, can comment on this. He was part of the subcommittee who set up the governance goals. Much of the deliberation around this was to potentially have the chairperson draft it, um, but this is a statement from the school committee as a whole. So 
Uh, part of the reason why this is here is to allow for an opportunity for discussion on it today, but also to make folks aware that this is um, going to be happening and solicit any input related to what we may want to include in a stakeholder letter. Um, you'll see on the first page of the school committee goals under community relationships is the third item down draft annual letter to be delivered to stakeholders in February and March, February slash March. Um, so this is a new territory. I'm not exactly sure how we proceed with this. We didn't work out the details of the process um, when we drafted these goals. Um, my position as the chairperson is that I am willing to draft a letter and bring it to the next subcommittee member, uh, pardon, to the next full committee meeting for deliberation and review and revision um, and then finalize the letter. Um, it doesn't have to be me if there is another volunteer that may want to draft a letter on behalf of the school committee to also follow the process of getting school committee input. Um, I think that that would be a great idea. Also, um, at this time, there's just a little space for us to kind of talk about what we may like to include um, and what we think this process should look like. I did reach out to the MASC um, Dorothy Presser to see if she was aware of any other districts that have uh, an annual letter or anything like this. And um, it seems that there are not many models out there. So I was hoping to bring a model for us, um, but I am sorry that I don't have one for you today. Um, Member Alexander, I know you just took a moment. Um, I did just kind of fill people in slightly about what was, how we came to, you know, or a little bit about the, the annual letter that we voted into the governance goals. I'm not sure if you want to, to speak to any of the process related to getting us to drafting this goal or if you have any input related to the process. My recollection and what I just conveyed to everyone was that um, we didn't really fully discuss the process in which this letter would manifest itself. Um, we just voted that we wanted to have one. I certainly feel that, uh, yeah, we do need to we'll reach out and get the model. And if you uh, had the information where you saw models previously, we could definitely entertain that and draft the letter. And I could do that as the secretary and present it to you for uh, further review and uh, stuff like that. But I do feel strongly that we do need to reach out to the stakeholders, uh, let them know and talk to them and have the conversations. So we could most definitely do that. And I can put that on my calendar to start working on that as well. Thank you, Member Alexander. Um, member Ekstrom, pardon? May I make a comment? Yes, all you have to do, folks, is just raise your hand. If I don't see you, then just you know get my attention. It's cool. And then I'll call on you, and then you can speak. Thank you. I think, just looking at this, um, I think one thing that, I, Superintendent, would you mind rereading what uh, the chair had put in the paper? Uh, of course. Um, uh, the point that I'm getting at is unless you know what someone's talking about, you wouldn't be able to decipher what that said, what your statement said. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Um, so right now we're actually talking about the no. an annual stakeholder letter. Right. Um, and that alone, none of the other community really... Uh, the school committee is bringing forward a request for funding re to restore the 1% cut to blah, 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 blah. This is a lot of um, higher level speaking and isn't nece doesn't necessarily speak to the people who aren't more invested in what we're doing or, or haven't spent time kind of going over budgets and things like that. And so I guess my point is when we're talking about doing letters or anything like that, I think we need to remember the audience and that we it, we need to keep the jargon to a minimum and just sort of bring it, I don't, I don't mean to say a basic level, but something that's easily interpreted by whomever it is that's just ca kind of casually reading the paper because there's a lot of big words in this. Like, 
In accordance with MGL Chapter 71, Section 59B, the F FY19 budget proposal reflects. That's nice. I mean, I, I just, I, I think part of what is happening is as because we're kind of in the know or remotely in the know of what's going on, if we don't keep in mind that there are a lot of people who aren't part of that conversation. And so they would look at this and be kind of like, I don't even know what that means. And so I'm not even going to bother with what's happening because I'm sure I wouldn't understand what's going to happen in the meeting at all. Okay. So I guess Thank that's you. my point. So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that your point is to um, remember the audience that we're speaking to and ensure that the language is reflecting that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really valuable input. Um, yeah, Superintendent. <clears throat> I don't know what format this letter will take, but um, each year the Greenfield Education Foundation puts out a letter to their um, people that donate to the Greenfield Education Foundation. And one of the things that we do in support of that letter is we gather statements and photographs um, of the impact that, that giving has on our schools and we help put that together. And if there is some part of that that would be helpful to this letter, we would love to um, make that available too. So um, if um, myself personally or uh, school administrators can be helpful in bringing information to the committee, photographs, quotations, um, vignettes, anything, it, you're taking the direction, but we'll provide what you need if there's something that could be useful in that work. Member Hollins. When we were talking about budget, we were talking about the um, need to increase money for translation services because we have so many homes where the primary language is in English. It's not English, and the superintendent explained that we have an obligation when we're communicating with parents about their schools or the children to know in their own language what we're saying. Um, so with respect to a narrative, English, beautifully written report, um, I think we have to be mindful that if parents if, may not be able to read it. And I want to say I received a um, report from the Greenfield Education Foundation, which I later learned the superintendent helped create. It isn't so many words, it's a lot of pictures. And it's lovely, you know, trying to recognize um, the donations of the Education Foundation. So I would say, mindful of the fact that we have to do translation if we're going to really want to engage families, that we look for small pictures <laughs> and fewer words in the, whatever type of report we sent out so the translation is not onerous. And the pictorial representation of the donations of the Greenfield Education Foundation to the school district was really a terrific, easy to scan through, and you kept wanting to go through to look at pictures. So I think format's really important. Thank you. Superintendent. Just in further support of that, if um, administrative um, assistant help is needed, we could also help facilitate that. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, any other? comments okay um, so this is really helpful I think at this point it would be helpful to have a motion as to who will draft an initial um, an initial document for us to review and revise um, as I mentioned I'm willing to do it um, secretary Alexander said that he is willing to do it if there's any other members that are interested in contributing in that way that's totally okay um, is there a motion to request that any individual member draft this letter? Superintendent? I can't make a motion, but I would <laughs> like to say something. Member Alexander spends a lot of time in our schools. And I think that it would be as a great starting point, not to say that other people don't. Member Ekstrom does, Member Karen's parent, Member Hollins knows a lot. Everybody has valuable contributions, but um, I just, would like to make a recommendation that this has never been done before and I think uh, member Alexander as the secretary would be a fitting place to start and has a good feel on some of the uh, events taking place in the school and how that connects to the committee thank you I would absolutely make a motion that member Alexander begin the process I am happy to help with editing but you certainly don't want me to write the first version um, and to, so to clarify the motion, I believe uh, Member Ekstrom moves to 
have member Alexander draft a letter to stakeholders for school committee review and revision. Is that accurate? Is there a second? A second. Second by member Karen. Um, any further deliberation or member Alexander? Yes. Well, one thing I probably need to make sure is, is uh, rule number one, never go to the restroom when we're talking about things. You can come back and you're, you're working something. Um, I would very happily like to take this project on. It sounds challenging. It sounds interesting. Uh, but I'm looking directly at uh, committee member Hollins because she's a very, very good wordsmith. She knows how to place words in the right spot. And I would appreciate any and all help from the rest of the committee. But uh, right now, if over the next couple of days, if you could send me a couple of email or send me an email with some thoughts on areas that we really want to make uh, for clarification, that'll help us get it started. So thank you. Okay, so there is a motion on the table. Um, all those in favor of Member Alexander drafting an initial draft of this letter, say aye. 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 Okay, so motion. Uh, any abstentions? Are you abstaining? Are you voting? Did you vote? Member Alexander abstains. <laughs> and so motion passes um, 401. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, our next item, our main agenda item, is the superintendent goals. Um, I, you have a document in your packet. It's a two-page document, I believe. It looks like this on the cover. Um, the superintendent goals were reviewed uh, at the subcommittee level, and I do believe that Member Alexander has some input and recommendation from the subcommittee. Okay, with the superintendent goals, just to give us a historical or quick back brief on where we're at right now, we are pretty much late on getting this job accomplished. It was supposed to have been done last fall. And so there's no argument or anything about that. It's just that it's a document that we have to have done. Uh, as quickly and expeditiously as possible. Um, we've talked about this in our very last personnel uh, subcommittee meeting. The superintendent was gracious enough to give us some focused, realistic goals to get us through to the end of this school year. And we have a consensus on goals number two and number three. I appreciated the spirited conversation that we had in refining these goals, and but goal number one, there is a dissension between two of us. My focus on goal number one was, I don't see that we have enough time left in the year to accomplish this goal. Although I would like to see this goal, this particular thought continue. Uh, but also as chair of the committee also need to remind the members of that committee, because the work's not done, as soon as we get this done, we're gonna to need to be working on the next set of goals as early as the month of June. So that's where I feel that we're at, and we just need to make sure that what we're doing now gets us through to the end of the year. It is measurable and that it is, we can, or the district can accomplish these things. Thank you. Okay, so um, I do want to open discussion with a motion. Uh, generally, that's, that's how we should be running our meetings according to Robert's rules. Um, I've been running them kind of loosely, which I think is working. Um, I'll check in with you all about that in a couple minutes. But with this particular item, let's, let's open with a motion. Is there a motion at this time? I motion to accept the superintendent's goals. As written? As written. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, so we are now open for discussion on this item. Member Hollins. I have a couple of comments. Um, the first is I think in the subcommittee meeting we discussed that really in a year long goal program for superintendent we're supposed to have between four and six goals and because of the time what I recall is that the committee and the superintendent both agreed to fewer goals 
just because it's almost the end of February and they have to be evaluated in May. So I just wanted to mention that in the future, we're supposed to have a more rigorous goal program. And the second thing I wanted to mention was, um, I, I think my opinion then and now is that something as big as uh, strategic planning Anybody that gets a four on AP calculus deserves whatever it is the good. <laughs> a box of dogs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, it seemed to me that uh, strategic planning, updating strategic plan was a school committee. And another reason I thought this wasn't personally a great goal for two months is it just seems like it's a school committee. Uh, advisory committee or whatever working on it I wasn't sure that was exactly a superintendent goal but in any event I don't think there's time to get involved in that because there's so many things on the table to do but adding one more but lastly I, I'd like to comment on goal three I am I am now and I was at the meeting a big uh, proponent of looking at family engagement and seeing what we, I, I asked at the meeting, do we keep data on how many people attend one thing or another and go to school events, respond? And the superintendent said, yes, in all the schools we're in, you know, we keep data on how we're responding. So I think the goal of expanding family community engagement, and we initially this was uh, more narrowly looked at as a goal to develop, it's still here a power hour program and through discussion we thought that it was kind of narrow it should be more district wide and the and so the goal as it stated to expand family and community engagement at the district level including including for families whose primary language is not English I supported um, we had a lot of suggestions it was going to be rewritten as the superintendent said it, it has but I do not support I do support the goal I do not support the way number one was reworded here where it says to create a new bilingual family outreach position to support needs of English language learners and there's two reasons I want to recommend a rewording of just that element and one is because there's a proposal in the budget committee that we We've had very little time to talk about for 56,000 new position only for parent outreach for bilingual students. And I recall, we're still talking about what we're gonna do with the budget. So I don't want this document to require us to spend 56,000 only on a full-time position for engaging parents of, um, Hispanic students, I think, is the way it was written. Um, because the, the goal was to figure out how, how can we expand this district-wide. So I'd, I'd like to recommend, this is my own discomfort with feeling like we have to put all that money just to one set of parents. Um, I would be more comfortable if we crossed out new bilingual and just to put create family outreach strategies, and as the goal says, including the needs of the English language learner family. I think there's a lot of different kinds of families, and we had talked about the whole district, that's all. But I support the goal, it's not the way number one is um, And Member Hollins, um, just to clarify, are you also stating that you're supporting goals one and three, like the goals as a package, or are you specifically saying that you're supporting goal number two with the proposed amendment to the key action? If I heard Member Alexander correctly, he was saying that the discussion of goal one was it wasn't practical with the short period of time that we had. I thought that's what he said just now, and I agree with that. It was a great goal, but there, it isn't really time for to implement that, I, unless I misheard what he just said before. Um. And, and I do support goal number two, and I do support goal number three. I just don't support the way one is written. 
particularly knowing there's a fifty-six thousand dollar position, it's still under discussion. Okay, um, superintendent, did you, or did you want to speak, or do you want to wait? I think I need a moment to collect my thoughts in response to that. There's a, a number of um, points there that were combined that I, I might like to respond to. Um, I think it would be helpful, I haven't had a chance to speak to this yet, but if I could just say there, I think this is the fifth time that I've presented modified goals. And each time there's a, a number of items that need to be discussed and, and folks at home are not looking at this document. But I'll just say that there are three goals written here that have um, about three months to accomplish. And there are, a, there's a main overarching theme. The first one is about identifying and reporting on progress in the strategic plan. The second one is in enhancing our focus on instructional leadership. And the third one is about expanding family and community engagement, including for families whose primary language is not English. Um, so there's the goal, which is broad. And then with each, within each one, there's a rationale and there's a reason why. And then there's the actions that could be taken so that someone would know if that was goal was, was or was not being met. And then the sort of the benchmarks, the what can you check off. So it's possible that the committee might agree with the goal, but want to refine some of the actions. Um, but as I thought about the conversation at the subcommittee level, um, the goal as it's pre presented, it's actually incredibly important that we focus on the needs of families whose primary language is not English because that's a change in our district right now. And the new position uh, that Member Hollins is referring to, it, it is a proposal in the budget and this could be rewarded to say, to propose a, a new position. It is a grant funded position and those funds are identified primarily for non-English speaking or English language learner families. So there's a, a limited ability to use those funds and, and they're really designated for families that need support in outreach and communication. So um, it's not uh, accurate to say that those funds really could just be applied anywhere. They're, they're really designated and I think it would serve us very well. Uh, it might be very helpful to have a vote on the key goals and then look specifically at the actions or the benchmarks which may need further modification. Member Karen. Um, so these are Superintendent Harper's goals. This is what she feels she can accomplish by June. We've given her advice on these goals on what we think can and cannot be accomplished. I'm correct on this. So then if she feels like she can accomplish this, by June, I guess I don't, I, if she thinks she can do this, why are we telling her she can't? There, one, two clarifications. Yes, yeah, thank you. And then you can continue a bit more. Um, the date at which we are actually meant to evaluate is on or before May 1st. Right. So it's actually less time right. than June. Um, and then it is, we are contractually bound to have mutually agreed upon goals. Cool. So it states that we need to both agree upon them. Okay. So that's essentially where that is coming from. But we evaluate based on if she accomplished the goals that we all agreed on, correct? Yes. Just making sure I understand all the time. Uh, member Ekstrom. Um, I actually just wanted to revisit goal number one. I unfortunately wasn't able to be at our meeting because I was sick. Um, and just point out again that we have not had time to meet. And so there really isn't any way that by February we can establish, you know, all of these things. And while the importance of goal number one is very strong to make sure that we're all on the same page, I don't know that we can accurately, I don't know that, that we as a, as a school committee can meet these deadlines regardless whether the superintendent could or not. That's, it, due to no fault of her own, these things haven't happened. And so by setting down these, these specific times, which yes, would be lovely, um, I think it would be unrealistic for us to be able to meet these timelines. I also think, I don't know if there's an alternative to have goal number one, 
make it more of a guideline, number one, and this is what we're looking to the future to accomplish, and then the next, when we do the next evaluation, make that, you know, now it's guideline number one or guideline whatever, and then when we set up our next evaluation process, which is, you know, basically around the corner, we can make that goal number one. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think that this isn't important by any means, but I think that we are tasking ourselves and the superintendent with something that um, is probably going to take more work than what's here. Um, thank you, Member Ekstrom. Uh, one quick comment related to the timelines. This did come up at the subcommittee level briefly um, related to, you know, well, what happens if, you know, the timeline that's outlined here actually doesn't reflect the timeline of the process. Um, and my recollection was that uh, we could receive some progress updates. Um, I do think that in key action number three is by May draft a progress report on the strategic plan. Um, so that is one way to resolve that. Um, I'm just uh, trying to give that as information that was deliberated on. Um, and then second thing before moving on to Member Hollins, are you offering a friendly amendment to the motion that's on the table? What would that friendly amendment look like? Well, I heard you <laughs> say that perhaps we could rename this to be a guideline or something along those lines. Something I think along that those would lines. Be, I think that you know, the superintendent knows that we're looking to do these things. This is, it's not a secret. We've had a, you know, with Member Karen and I starting, we've had a, a turnover on the board and timelines are running short. And, and getting this evaluation taken care of is a priority. We can't get the evaluation taken care of if we're not, we're not doing this. We're not doing this because we're working on the budget. All of those things kind of make a perfect storm of this needs to be not a goal, but yes, a, a guideline, and then within the next eval, make it a goal. So yeah. So to help to kind of, um, kind of uh, help phrase a potential amendment, I'm hearing you say that um, you would offer an amendment to goal number one and with, are you proposing that the timeframes be a guideline or? I am proposing that this not be something that the superintendent be evaluated on with this evaluation. Okay. Knowing that it will be included in the next one. I don't know how to do that, but I think that would be appropriate and fair for the group at large in general. Okay. Um, so again, I'm just offering this to help to kind of uh, offer a friendly amendment to initiate goal number one in this goal cycle um, and carry forward into FY19 goal cycle. Yes. Um, okay. So if that is a friendly amendment, if you agree with my wording, then um, you are now offering a friendly amendment to, I believe it's member Karen. Um, and so member Karen can respond to that um, and either accept the friendly amendment or not accept the friendly amendment. I accept that friendly amendment. Okay, and then um, <laughs> Member Holland, you've been holding your hand up for a while. <coughs> it just occurred to me that uh, there's a conversation about the goals. I don't think, I think to be clear, we should just vote on them one separately instead of trying to amend the motion to unclear all the discussion on each of the goals. So. Um, did you have a comment, Member Alexander? No. Okay, I thought you had her hand up. Okay, um, so my understanding now is that we would first be voting on the amendment and then voting on the motion, is that correct? Vote the amendment first and then we vote the motion. Okay, um, so, and just to help 
again, to kind of explain some of this, with Member Hollins' suggestion, if that were to be the case, um, Member Karen has a motion on the table and could withdraw her motion if she wanted to change that. Um, but right now there's a motion on the table to A, accept the goals as written um, with then the friendly amendment from Member Ekstrom to modify goal number one to initiate in this cycle and then carry forward into the FY19 goal cycle. And correct me if I'm wrong, Secretary, um, if there's, so my understanding now is we are voting on the amendment that was offered by Member Ekstrom to uh, amend goal number one to start in this goal cycle and continue on to the second goal cycle, pardon, FY19 goal cycle. That is correct. So if we vote the amendment first, and then that would leave us open to accepting voting on committee member Karen's uh, motion to accept these goals. So then basically, yes. With the amendment. Yeah. Okay. So right now we're voting on the amendment. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, superintendent. So I'm just looking for clarification. The, the wording was to begin this goal, number one, about the strategic plan in this goal cycle and then continue into next year. And I'm not clear how that impacts the timelines in the key actions and how, if at all, it would be evaluated in this cycle or if it's only being evaluated in the next cycle, in which case I might suggest that I would be more than happy to begin work on this informally if it's not evaluated this year, but I might make it cleaner to make it a goal next year and evaluate it next year and I will begin the work on it anyway. Um, because if you're saying you're not going to evaluate it now, you may not want a document with timelines tied to it now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> um, you would yeah, essentially rescind accepting the amendment. Take back. <laughs> Rewind. Um, but I think the easiest thing to do is actually if Member Ekstrom would just um, rescind the friendly amendment from your end. I'm going to rescind my friendly amendment. Thank you. I keep glancing at our attorney who's out here in the audience thinking, <laughs> If I'm doing this wrong, let me know. Well, he's laughing, so let's not be that bad. <laughs> okay, so we are back then um, the to the original motion, which is to vote uh, on the goals as written. Um, so did you want to offer, did somebody want to yeah. offer an, an uh, amendment to remove goal number one? Or would you like to withdraw the I will just withdraw the motion to accept as written. Okay. And then continue. Member Hollins. I'd like to move that given the timeline, we agreed to two goals for the superintendent between uh, for the for this school year. And then the next motion will be the goal. Okay. Um, so oh. there's is there a second? That was second. a motion, right? Just step two goals. Okay. Um, any deliberation on that? And would you like to speak to your motion? We I, just did, but well, I I'd just like us to be clear how many goals we're going to have, and then to vote the which goals. Member Ekstrom, did you have a comment? Maybe you just answered that. Those two goals being enhanced focus on instructional leadership and expand family and community engagement That'll at the, the district level. Those would be the okay. So right now the motion is to, rather than having three goals, have two goals set for the superintendent. Um, okay, uh, who is the second? Aye, you seconded, thank you. Um, all those in favor of two goals? Aye. Aye, okay. Motion okay. passes unanimously. Member Hollins. I'd like to um, motion that one of the two goals be to enhance focus on instructional leadership. Second. Um, any deliberation on this? 
Okay, all those in favor of goal number two, enhanced focus on instructional leadership as written. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Cool. Member Hollins. I can make a motion that we accept uh, goal three, the uh, goal statement three as worded to, ex to expand family and community engagement at the district level, including for families whose primary language is not English. Second. Second, Member Alexander. Okay, any deliberation? Member Hollins? My motion doesn't include all the wording beneath it. That's for the goal statement. I have a issue with the first items. I'd like to just agree to the goal in my motion. Okay, so the vote is on just the goal statement, excluding key actions and benchmarks. Is that correct? Unless you want that discussion to come up with the goal. Um, I think that it is in the interest of the committee to clarify the key actions and benchmarks for any goals that we're voting in today. Um, because it's the comprehensive package of the goal that we're voting in. So we could do that in this motion or we could do that in a subsequent motion. Um, I think it's fine to vote on the goal number three language primarily right now since that's the motion that's on the table. Is there any deliberation on that? Member Ekstrom? So then we'd have to vote on, we'd have, we would meet again or take this back to, to No, we would well, just continue tonight. About, okay, mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. Any comment, any further deliberation? Okay, so all those in favor of the goal number three, goal statement alone, um, expand family and community engagement at the district level, including for families whose primary language is not English. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, that is unanimous. Okay, and Member Hollins, did you have um, a motion related to key actions and benchmarks? I'd like to say that uh, this was discussed at the personnel committee meeting. There was going to be some rewrite. This is, um, includes some rewrite. I have, I would like to see uh, one change in item number one. I think, um, I would like, I would recommend this wording to create family outreach strategies, including support needs of English language learner families, etc., and not make this position specific. Is there a second? Okay, seeing no second, uh, motion fails. Um, would anyone, does anyone else want to offer a motion? Related to, yes, member Karen. I have a motion that we just change the action to say propose new bilingual, so it doesn't force a hire that we can't decide on until we finish the budget. Propose or work towards filling the position. There's the language needs to be changed, I agree, because I don't want us locked into hiring someone when we haven't decided on a budget yet. Um, so I motion that instead of say create new, Family get reach position, propose, and bring key information forward that would help us get that position built. Did you have a comment? Hand up, hand up, shake a hand up. No, no. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you had your hand up. Thank you, <laughs> Member Karen. Um, Superintendent, do you have any comments on that? <clears throat> I think that's a great suggestion. The intention of creating it is. Um, creating the potential for the position. I think the proposed amendment um, 
meets the committee's obligation here. You certainly can't commit to this position based on where we are in the budget cycle. And I think it uh, also captures the intent of how this is written more succinctly. Um, Member Karen, could you repeat? So you're, you move to? Change the language of action one to say propose bilingual family outreach position and following, including research for grant funding. Is the rest the same? Yes. Okay, is there a second to this motion? Member Ekstrom second. Um, and to repeat back, I am hearing a motion from Member Karen to change key actions for goal number three, number one, to propose bilingual family outreach position including research for grant funding to support needs of English language learner families and translation services for FY19. Okay, Member Hollins. I'll just try one more time. The goal is to expand family and community engagement di district-wide. So I just want to say we've never discussed where if we had 50,000 to spend, we want it. So just recently, we've had all the kindergarten teachers come talk about how we need to do more outreach at early childhood because children are coming to school without toilet training. We've had dozens of parents come to talk about um, their interest in accelerated classes. We've had interest in special ed parents. We've talked about choice out and, you know, have we talked to parents? There's so many different kinds of parents that have come up that we've talked about in um, that to limit ourselves at this minute only to a parent of bilingual children, that's another category of children, of course, those parents, but if the goal is to, from a superintendent level, increase engagement at the goal level, why limit it only to one population of parents? So that's why I think it should just be strategies for it's off, not. Okay, Member Ekstrom. Um, I un I understand what you're saying, Member Holland, but I think I think we are far behind the times if in 2018 we're just starting to discuss a bi bilingual family outreach outreach position. This isn't. Um, I don't fuck. I don't see this as an alternative to doing other things. I think this is something that just has to happen. It's, we have a, a multicultural community in Greenfield. We have, um, and, and, but I think that if we don't specifically say bilingual family outreach position, those groups that are more vocal, say special education parents, or I, I say that only because I happen to be in that group and I know that we're vocal. Um, people who aren't comfortable with our native language and English as their second language aren't going to all come together because they probably don't speak the same language as a group. And so for us to not make that a priority is kind of chopping our nose off to spite our face. I don't think that means that it would um, disinclude anyone. I mean, there's further further down, key action, promote and engage families to encourage attendance, provide going ongoing, you know, all of these things, this is just to, and this is just to ensure, and we have made a focus on engaging bilingual families. Thank you, Member Ekstrom. Um, did you have a comment? Oh, thank you. I, just to continue on, I thought that I heard that this position was a grant funded position, so this is not our budget anyway. I may have misunderstood. I was not at the budget committee to understand that. And then the second point I wanted to make is that I, I sort of agree with Susan, uh, uh, Ms. Ekstrom that I feel like we are, yes, that one line specifically is bilingual, but not, like none of the others are. So yes, that one position is bilingual, but all of the other key actions under that goal are district-wide. So I, if, 
I think that that seems like a realistic goal, that it's time. And a, a, a bilingual family outreach position would help because we have so many different languages being spoken. We need someone who can help with all of those languages. Member Alexander. <coughs> Although I can agree with uh, us being focused on strategy in which we put the strategic plan as a focus for our work this upcoming year, uh, to, in order to start talking and thinking about strategy, I have to support. We do have to have someone in the position to get the ball, to get the conversation rolling. So, um, but yes, yeah, so I, do, I, I do support uh, uh, council member uh, Karen's suggestion. Okay. Uh, we have a motion on the table. Um, all those in favor of Member Karen's motion with the amendment to key action item one. All those. Could you just read, read the proposed sure, um, wording change? Um, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, much, much appreciation for the work that has gone into this. And um, thank you, Superintendent. Yes, Member Alexander. Uh, real quick, just to make sure I fully understanding being the chair of that committee. So we can pretty much say this job is complete for the moment. Yes, in some... Until June, when we start all over again. <laughs> until June, until we establish new superintendent goals, that's correct. Oh. Um, so we have voted on goal number two and goal number three to be adopted as the two goals that we will use to evaluate the superintendent um, on or before May 1st of this year. Member Hollins. I have a... Just a question about what you just said, Senator mm -hmm. Ray. Yes. The um, evaluation we're talking about is the evaluation connected to the DESI requirement. Does that mean that, that anyway, I have a question about that. I'm gonna, I'll think about the question for another time. Okay, sure, yeah, please um, let me know. Um, and so our next uh, business item is new business. I do have one item um, for new business and really it's just that I meant to add this into my chairperson report, but um, I really appreciate any input related to how we are running the meetings, how your packets are received, etc. So if there's any input at any time, you may, j please, please, I'm, I'm wide open to hearing that input. Um, I really want to do the best that I can to serve the group. Um, I did hear from one member earlier today um, requesting to pick up the printed packets uh, further with, uh, pardon, in advance of the meeting, and that is something that we can arrange. Um, that's been requested by multiple members, actually, over the past couple of years. So um, I do, we can definitely do that. And if there's any other input you all have, just let me know. Um, any other new business? Okay then. Seeing none, we will now enter into executive session and we will come back only to adjourn the meeting. Um, we are entering into executive session for the purposes of conducting strategy, according to MGL CA 30A 21 2 and 3, to conduct strategy sessions and preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. Um, a roll call vote is necessary to go into executive session. Is there a motion to enter executive session? I move that we move into executive session. And a second? Second. Member Hollins, okay. And roll call vote, please. Committee member Karen. Aye. Committee member Ekstrom. Aye. Committee member Hollins. Aye. Committee member Nunez. Yes. And I will vote yes as well. Okay, we are now entering into executive session and we.
All of our productions at GCTV are sponsored in part by Bay State Health, providing the care you and your family need when you need it close to home. Visit them online at baystatehealth.org. Greenfield Savings Bank. Visit them at 400 Main Street in Greenfield. Call them at 774-3191 or go online to greenfieldsavings.com. Greenfield Community College, providing access and excellence in higher education in the Pioneer Valley. Visit them at gcc.mass.edu. The Hammond Family. The Hammond Family are longtime supporters of Greenfield Community Television. New Fortune Chinese Restaurant on the Mohawk Trail in Greenfield. Visit them online at newfortuneMA.com. Call them at 772-0838 and check them out on Facebook. Real Cleaning Services. Cleaning Hampshire and Franklin County since 1972. We don't cut corners, we clean them. Check them out online at realclean.com. Call them at 413-422-1143. People's United Bank, located at 45 Federal Street in Greenfield. You can call them at 774-3713 or visit them online at peoples.com. The Solar Store of Greenfield, replacing fossil fuels and nuclear power one home at a time. Visit them at 23 Fisk Ave. Call them at 413-772-3122 or visit them online at solarstoreofgreenfield.com. Thank you to our sponsors for supporting all of GCTV's productions.